Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining today's general membership meeting of the Management Association of the Philippines. <clears throat> I'm Popoy Del Rosario, the MC and moderator for today's GMM. Please settle down comfortably. We will now begin our program. May I request everyone to pause and bow our heads for a short prayer to be followed by the Philippine National Anthem. Our most merciful God, we come to you in our weakness. We come to you in our fear. We come to you with trust. For you alone are our hope. We place before you the disease present in our world. We turn to you in our time of need. Bring wisdom to doctors. Give understanding to scientists. And thou care grievers with compassion and generosity. Bring healing to those who are ill. Protect those who are most at risk. Give comfort to those who have lost a loved one. Welcome those who have died into your eternal home. Stabilize our communities. Unite us in our compassion. Remove all fear from our hearts. Fill us with confidence in your care. Amen. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Thank you. May I now request the president of MAP, who is the chair of Far Eastern University, Mr. Gigi Montenola, to deliver his welcome remarks. Gigi. Yes. Our guest speaker, Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nobrales, reactors, Mr. Rex Villon, MAP Governor Rogelio Simpson, and Ms. Maria Margarita Torres, our distinguished guests from the government, the diplomatic circle, the academia and media, our board of governors, fellow MAP members, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. As I stress in my inaugural address, our activities this year are guided by the theme, the great reset leading for the common good. In pursuing MAP's mission of promoting management excellence for nation building, the MAP board focuses on the following three priority programs in 2021. To safely reopen the economy, to promote shared prosperity and ESG, environmental, social, and governance, and to enhance member benefits via best practice sharing. We also mentioned the five point platform that, following, that covers the following crises, a health crisis, an economic crisis, an environmental crisis, an educational or learning crisis and a social justice crisis. Once again, I'm pleased to report that we're on the right track with our five point program. <clears throat> For health, our general management meeting next April uh, will focus on the health crisis on the topic, quote, buy in, opt out, why trust matters in the vaccine program. The MAP Health Committee, chaired by Juni Del Mundo, is now working on a series of activities that will culminate in the April 13 GMM. Its primary objective is to provide a venue for in-depth discussion of the factors that hinder 
the vaccination program and thus help MAP members manage messaging and communications to their employees on the effects of the vaccine to lower the barriers to implementation. We also wish to provide a venue for expert resource persons to address the public's concerns and other related issues with clarity and transparency. As previously discussed, we are also on track in ordering the Moderna vaccine. We've placed an order with ICTSI Foundation for 47,000 doses for 112 members with orders <clears throat> below 4,000 doses. 12 other MAP members have ordered above 4,000 each for an aggregate order of 110,000 doses. We note in newspaper reports that the government has closed a 13 million purchase uh, with Moderna and is in discussion uh, for a further 7 million for the private sector. These are scheduled for delivery in the third quarter. On the economic side, uh, we've had two briefings, an economic briefing last February 9, with the following as speakers, Dr. Johanna Chua, of Citigroup, Dr. Shell Habito of Brain Trust, and Dr. Philip Medalla of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. We also have had Secretary of Finance, Carlos Sani Dominguez, as our inducting officer and guest speaker for our inaugural meeting in January. We joined 50 other business organizations in supporting Secretary Dominguez's call and in lobbying strongly for the passage of the CREATE corporate recovery and tax incentives for in enterprises, which mainly reduces corporate income tax and provides a 250 million peso stimulus to the economy. Our understanding is that the House submitted this to the president uh, on February 24. Uh, so the president will uh, approve uh, possibly or, you know, uh, decide what to do with the um, bill or let it lapse into law a month after it has been submitted to him. And then to, safe, to help safely reopen the economy, our MAP Transportation Committee, chaired by Eddie Yap, has also released a comprehensive statement on mass transportation for mobility and climate change mitigation to help fulfill economic and environmental objectives. For the education or learning crisis, we will be having a special joint general membership meeting on this issue with the Philippine Business for Education on March 29. Brother Armin Luistro, a PBED advisor and president of De La Salle Philippines will be the, the speaker. The MAP National Issues Committee co-chaired by Francis Lim and Risa Mantaring has also created a subcommittee on education that will propose how the MAP can address the many problems of the country's educational system, specifically in the areas of internet access, speed, and connectivity. In June, our general management meeting will focus on the environmental crisis. But today, our focus is the social justice crisis. Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles will be enlightening us on the government's interventions in quote, addressing hunger, poverty alleviation and unemployment amidst the pandemic. It is particularly timely as the newspapers today report that we have had the highest unemployment of 4.5 million uh, Filipinos in the last 15 years. We also expect the secretary to specify the areas where the MAP will be able to help specifically with the anti-hunger program. The MAP Social Justice Committee chaired by Popoy del Rosario will also operationalize the Philippine business community's covenant for shared prosperity to inspire everyone to create wealth ethically and to share that wealth like good stewards to help eradicate poverty. Please check your emails and Viber inboxes and our electronic newsletter 
the MAP memo for regular updates on MAP programs and activities. Thank you for your continuing support. Good afternoon. Thank you, Gigi. We will now proceed to the recognition of MAP's life membership awardees for 2021. For the information of everyone, life members are the past presidents of the association and those who have been regular MAP members for 20 consecutive years. Life members are actually exempt from paying the annual dues and they only pay for the meetings they actually attend. May I now ask each life member to open their respective videos. Our first awardee is the immediate past president of the MAP, who is a senior partner and ex-co member of ACRA Law, attorney Francis Lim. A round of applause for, please, for Francis. May I also call on the other 13 awardees who have been regular members for 20 consecutive years. <coughs> Mr. Antonino T. Aquino, Director of Ayala Land Inc. Mr. Yu Ming Chin, Executive Director of Diventi Search Asia. Attorney Felipe L. Gosson, Chair and CEO of GMA Network Inc. Mr. Antonio T. Hernandez, Consultant of Management and Development Finance. Mrs. Tomasa H. Lipana, Independent Director of SM Investments Corporation. Mr. George J. Martinez, second vice chair and CEO of Malayan Bank. Mrs. Isabelita Paredes Mercado, chair and CEO of IPM Group of Companies. Mr. Rafael Yamado Reyes, CEO of Figs Inc. Mr. Roman Felipe S. Reyes, Chair of Reyes Takandong and Company. Mr. Jose R. Simeon, Chair of Consolidated Matrix Inc. Mr. Ernesto Tanmantiong, CEO of Jollibee Foods Corporation. Mr. Orlando B. Bea, founder and CEO of Paymaya Philippines Inc. And Dr. Reynaldo B. Bea, president and CEO of Mapua University. A big hand please for our life membership awardees. For the presentation of new MAP members for online induction, I would like to call now on the chair of the MAP membership committee, who is the senior partner and ex-co member of APRALO, attorney Francis Lim. Okay, uh, thank you, Popoy. Mr. President, uh, fellow MAP members, our distinguished guests led by uh, Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nucrales, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to announce that this afternoon, we're inducting eight new MAP members who will increase our total membership from 1,047 to 1,055. May I now read the names of our inductees. One, Mr. Jose Maria Hochi Ayabaya, my Kababayan, a chair of the Cagayan, Electric Power and Light Company, or SEPALCO, Line of Business electra, electra, Electric Power Distribution, um, Principal Sponsors are myself and Risa Mantaring, 
Number two, Ms. Hilary La uh, Ang, Vice President, Heritage Multi-Office Products, Inc., Line of Business Trading of IT Products, Sponsors, Principal Sponsor is Mary Ang, I'm the co-sponsor. Next, Mr. Danny, uh, Daniel Zadani Barlikos, President and COO of Risk Integrate Inc., Line of Business, Risk Consulting and Insurance Advisory. His principal sponsor is Mr. Go Gordon Alan P. Joseph, and the co sponsor is yours truly. Next, Mr. Aurelio Noel G. Dyrit, whom I know very well, is the president and head of investment banking and advisory, Maybank ATR Team and Capital Partners Inc., Line of Business, Investment Banking. I'm the principal sponsor together with Lisa Mantering. Next, Mr. Christopher Thomas Chris Konsuji Kogotianum, EVP, uh, Executive Assistant to the President, DMCI Holdings Inc., Line of Business Holding Firm. Sponsor, principal sponsor is Ernie B. Pantanko. Next is um, Ms. Christina Amor. Lim Maklang, co-founder and chief communications officer. Geyser Maklang Marketing Communications Inc. Line of business, marketing and communications. Sponsors, Artito Ortiz, Noel Bonowan, and Amy Johnson. Next, please. Mr. George Royeka, one of the 2021 TOYM awardees just recently held. He's the chief transport advocate of ANCAS and also a co-founder of ANCAS, line of business, database activities, online electronic content distribution, transportation. Sponsors are myself and Risa Mangdaring. Next, please. Ms. Vivian Cruz. Last but not least, Ms. Vivian Cruz. Vice Chair and Deputy Managing Partner of SGB and Company line of business, assurance, tax, transaction, advisory services. Sponsors is Governor Wilson Tang and uh, Mr. Ramon Dison. At this point, I would like to call on our president, Mr. Gigi Montinola, to lead the online induction of our new members. Please raise your right hand. I state your name. I, Aurelio Noel Dairet. I, Jose Alamaya. I, Chris Catiano. We will solemnly pledge. Do hereby solemnly pledge. Solemn pledge. Hereby solemnly pledge. That I will perform well and faithfully. That I will perform, perform, well, perform well, well and faithfully. faithfully. To the best of my ability. To the, to best, the best of my of ability. ability. My duties as a regular member. My duties, my duties as a regular, regular member. member. In order to contribute to the achievement of the objectives, in order, in order to, to contribute to the achievement of the objectives of the Management Association of the Philippines, of the Management Association of the Philippines. So help me God. So, so help me God. God. Congratulations and welcome to the MAP. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Francis. Congratulations you. again to our new members. Let us welcome and give a warm round of virtual applause to our new MAP members. Some reminders, please, before we start the presentation of our speakers. Number one, as participants for this GMM, we would like to inform all of you that you are automatically muted and your camera video was also automatically put to off. Number two, you may submit your questions to the Q&A button that you see on your screen. With the assistance of our MAP secretariat, I will read the questions on your behalf. Number three, for your information, you will only be able to see the speaker and the reactors, but you will not be able to view the other participants. And finally, 
at any point during this GMM, in case you lose connection, please join again by repeating what you did earlier in logging in. In line with the MAP policy and in the interest of time, we will dispense with the lengthy introduction of our speaker and reactors. I would like to remind our speaker that he is given 30 minutes for his presentation and five minutes each for our three reactors. The presentation is actually very important because it will discuss pressing national issues like hunger, poverty, unemployment, and vaccination during these critical times. Hopefully it will also show us how we in the business sector can help and be a partner in mission with the government. May I now call on our speaker, please welcome the cabinet secretary, Carlo A.B. Nograles. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Popoy Del Rosario. Um, I'd also like to greet MAP President Aurelio Gigi Montinola III, Immediate Past President Attorney Francisco Francis Lim, to all the officers and members of the Management Association of the Philippines, and congratulations to the MAP Life Membership Awardees as well as the newly inducted members. So, magandang hapon, mayang hapon sa tanan. Thank you again for inviting me. I'm most honored to be here. My task today is to give an overview of our country's zero hunger program and how the private sector can help in alleviating hunger and addressing unemployment and improve the investment climate in our country as we continue to battle the COVID-19 pandemic. In a few more days, it will be one year since Luzon was placed under ECQ or Enhanced Community Quarantine that was last March 17, 2020. Since then, we have been battling COVID-19 on two fronts. The first is on the health front. As of March 8, 2021, according to the Department of Health, those who have tested positive reached a total of 597,763. I'd like to point out that these are cumulative cases since the beginning. But I'd also like to underscore that um, of this, 39,330 or 6.6% .6 are currently active. The death, the death toll stands at 12,521. And also like to emphasize that those who have recovered from the disease is now 545,912 and counting. That's more than 91% of the total tally. At the start, apart from responding to and managing the health risks, very much affected, especially during the start of the pandemic, was our country's ability to provide the necessary and immediate health care to COVID-19 patients with great pressure on our healthcare system. So much has improved since then, and we would like to thank profusely our private sector partners for making that happen. The second is of course the economic front. And this is something that we share with other countries across the globe. Most economies around the world have been seriously affected with travel restrictions and travel bans, quarantine policies, lockdowns, causing stoppage and disruptions in the movement of people and even the flow of goods and services. Many of our Kababayans uh, obviously lost their jobs, closed down businesses, OFWs had to come home, and the most vulnerable were seriously affected. We saw a rise in self-rated hunger, inflation, and unemployment numbers have gone up while our GDP has shaved off, posting a rate of negative 8.3% in the fourth quarter of 2020, resulting in a negative 9.5% full-year growth rate for 2020. And there are some of the pronounced effects on our labor force and investment climate, so much so that total foreign direct investments in 2020 was cut by more than half. Now, to measure the damage brought by COVID-19, the Department of Science and Technology Food and Nutrition Research Institute conducted 
what we call a rapid nutrition assessment survey. And the results in that December 29, 2020 survey showed food insecurity during the implementation of our community quarantines last year. In fact, 62% of the 5,717 surveyed households um, experience um, moderate or severe food insecurity. And the food insecurity uh, was, me as we measured it, peaked between March and April of 2020. And you would remember that that was during the ECQ um, um, classification and gradually decreased as mobility restrictions were gradually eased in most surveyed areas. Impact on food security was highest in 74.7% .7 of households with children and 80.8% .8 of households with pregnant members than in households without such members. 56.3% of the households reported having problems accessing food during community quarantine periods due to Number one, no money, that's 22.1%. No public transportation or cannot go out, 21.6%. No money due to loss of job, 19.5%. Limited food stores in the area, 10.8%. And for the elderly, with no other members to buy food, that's, uh, that was 5.1%. And due to the pandemic, our hunger incidents had at one quarter doubled to 16%. Uh, that was about the first quarter of 2020. Then it rose to 20% and even to a high of 30.7% in the third quarter, according to the SWS hunger survey. Um, thankfully, uh, on the fourth quarter of 2020, it went back to 16%. And our target now is to drive that even lower by 2021, or at least bring it back to the hunger incidence in the country uh, at its lowest, which is 8.8%. This was pre-pandemic. By the way, this was the lowest we've ever gotten uh, in the history of SWS hunger incident surveys. Um, in November of last year, I shared with the MAP about the Interagency Task Force on Zero Hunger, which I chair, and how we came up with six key result area uh, technical working groups. Uh, undoubtedly, the pandemic compounded our hunger problem, uh, so much so that... Um, we have not actually been able to conduct our expanded national nutrition survey in 2020. But if we look at where we were in 2019, according to the ENNS survey, uh, Filipino children under five years old stand at 28.8% stunted, 5.8% wasted, with 2.9% overweight for their height. Uh, but if you um, compare that or uh, put it back to back with the rapid nutrition assessment survey conducted in 2020, it really shows that COVID has affected access to basic nutrition and health services with a significant reduction in the participation of our Operation Timbang Plus, the vitamin A supplementation, supplementary feeding, and deworming programs of the government as, as these have become very challenging during the pandemic. Uh, so much so that... Um, According to our studies, 21.3% of children were reported to have lost weight during the pandemic. Thus, the Task Force on Zero Hunger, which I chair, has to get everything back on track. And it will need to ensure that the government policies, initiatives, and projects on attaining zero hunger should be more coordinated, more responsive, and more effective um, as embodied in our national food policy. The goal is to really outline our national priorities based on a comprehensive understanding of our hunger problem and its related issues to ultimately achieve zero hunger. So in October of last year, during World Food Day, we launched, uh, as soon as we launched a national food policy, we called on the private sector to join us in the fight in ending hunger and achieve, achieving food security and improved nutrition. And we'd like to thank the private sector for responding to the call. I'd like to make special mention to one of the reactors, Margot Torres, um, who's been really instrumental and central um, to getting the private sector involved in this movement. And the movement is none other than Filipinas Contra Gutom. 
Ending hunger is a collective responsibility and an imperative for all of us. And government really needs the help of the private sector and other stakeholders to achieve our shared goals of zero hunger in the country. And this is Filipinas Contra Gutom's shared principle. PKG helps provide sustainable solutions on food availability, increased food accessibility, adequacy of food nutrition and assistance in hunger-stricken communities during these times, uh, these pandemic times, and even during disaster and calamity periods. So while the long-term goal is to end hunger by 2030, Pilipinas Contra Gutom has set an immediate and more realistic goal of uplifting 1 million Filipinos from hunger by year 2022. And PKG has a two-pronged approach. First is to empower local food producers through sustainable programs that support food production and distribution. And number two is to provide sustenance to marginalized Filipino families by addressing malnutrition and providing meals to communities in times of disaster. Everyone from private sector companies to small and medium enterprises, to NGOs, to civic organizations, to the academe, and even the general public is invited to be part of the movement. Latayo kasali dito. Last November, we launched PKG. It was actually a soft launch and started to activate the pillar on assistance to immediately help provide food for communities affected by COVID and during that time, um, the back-to-back-to-back the -back -to -back typhoons that were hitting our country. Several companies and NGOs actually came together for this movement. And since then, there have been numerous multi-sectoral discussions and multi-sectoral initiatives on the ground. Close to 70 non-government organizations, foundations, not-for-profit organizations, companies, including digital and media organizations are now part of the movement. And it's really been an amazing um, journey and it's been, been very inspiring to see everyone's enthusiasm and commitment to join the movement and make a collective contribution and a sustainable impact. PKG's guiding principles are that reinvention is not necessary and what we want is to be able to synergize and align, to divide and conquer, to face this daunting task by leveraging on our collective responses and resources and every organization's best practices. So I hope that many other members of the MAP would join us as much as the much needed force multiplier to the programs, activities, and projects in our national food policy. And my office is most willing to sit down and discuss the many ways you can help. We are but a call away or even a Zoom session away. Now, on to unemployment. Another equally important issue that has been magnified or aggravated by the pandemic is unemployment. In our efforts to contain the spread of the virus, our economy and labor market were obviously adversely affected. Based on the Labor's Force Survey of the Philippine Statistics Authority, more than 420,000 Filipinos lost their jobs in 2020, bringing the country's unemployment rate to 10.2%. Because of this, the Department of Labor and Employment, Department of Trade and Industry, and the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority recognize the need to harmonize the employment, livelihood, and training programs of government to contribute in the recovery of our economy. Thus, the National Employment Recovery Strategy, or the NERS 2021-2022, to medium-term plan anchored on recharge PH and the updated Philippine Development Plan 2017 to 2022 aims to expand the current Trabajo Negocio Kabuhayan Initiative. Its main objectives include the following. First is to create a policy environment that encourages generation and improved access of employment, livelihood, and training opportunities. Second, to improve employability and the productivity of our workers and take advantage of the opportunities in the labor market under the new normal. And third, to provide support to existing and emerging businesses to preserve and create employment. So the nurse will address access to jobs and livelihood programs, 
It will create retraining opportunities to improve employability and do a refocusing of jobs to cope with the needs of the current pandemic. To achieve this, the nurse task force was cons constituted to focus on initiatives to restart economic activities, restore business confidence, upgrade and retool the workforce, and facilitate labor market access with the end view of creating employment opportunities and improving the employability of workers. So each member of the task force shall identify the relevant programs, activities, and projects and policies to support these outcomes for inclusion in the action plan. Now, in addition to providing training opportunities for employers and workers, the nurse task force also aims to generate more employment and entrepreneurship opportunities through provision of support to existing and emerging businesses. This finalized nurse action plan will serve as an input in the work plan of the task group on economic recovery, which is under the purview of Recharge PH. And um, in the last uh, February 15, 2021 nurse task force meeting, the following were identified as interventions which will highly impact the labor market. Um, a proposed, there's a proposed wage subsidy for private sector workers, which we're currently studying. Uh, the conduct of a job summit, uh, passage of uh, priority legislation, some of which have already have already been uh, been signed or some of that already been approved by Congress. The retooling and upskilling programs of TESDA under Tulong Trabajo, the youth employment programs, which include Job Start Philippines. Assistance to establishments through extension of loans, deferment of applicable fees, upgrading of processes, the extension of social protection to vulnerable, vulnerable groups, and the continuous implementation of the build, 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 the plant, 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 and the Balik Provincia Bagong Pag-asa program. So um, organizationally, uh, the organizational structure, uh, or structurally, I mean, the task force is chaired by the DTI, and co-chaired by DOLE and TESDA. While the Office of the Cabinet Secretary, uh, my office is among the members of the oversight committee of this task force. So I'm very pleased to learn that the MAP's theme of opening the economy for common good, and the shared prosperity of all is very much aligned with the government's programs on addressing hunger, poverty, and unemployment. At this point, I'd like to reiterate my call to the MAP to continue to help government. For hunger, as chair of the task force on zero hunger, I urge you to join Filipinas Contra Gutom. We welcome the best practices that the members of the MAP could share and these things and initiatives and projects that you're currently doing we will be pleased to link up with you and link you up with our current work stream leads and brief you on how we can work together to further accelerate the realization of the goal to uplift 1 million Filipinos from hunger. We also invite you to visit the PKG microsite, which is laginghanda.gov.ph slash Um And um, we also do have a, a website I think uh, Margot messaged me. Uh, it's PilipinasContraGutom.com. And we welcome all the help that any individual or company can provide as we have repeatedly asserted the problem of hunger in the Philippines is huge and widespread and necessitates a whole of nation approach, not just a whole of government approach. And thus, anyone who wants to extend a hand can contribute to make a significant and lasting difference, if not change altogether the situation of our hungry kababayans because government cannot do it alone. Magtulungan po tayo, walang may iwan, dahil lahat kasali, lahat kasalo. Sa parte naman po ng ating laban para sa pag-angat ng ekonomiya, ang pagkakabuo ng National Employment Recovery Strategy or Nurse Task Force at katuwang na Oversight Committee ay paraan ng pagsiguro na ang nurse at ang task force ay mak makakapagbibigay ng kinakailangang suporta at pagsiguro sa hanap buhay, trabaho at mga negosyo. The bottom line um, is so that we can help in our economic recovery with reset, rebound, and rebuild. Reset by addressing the, the pandemic, 
rebound by boosting infrastructure development and by <laughs> job opportunities, especially in the countryside, and rebuild by assisting communities adapt the post-pandemic life. Help us by reopening your businesses, employing more workers, infusing more capital, investing in our infrastructure development, mainly through the Build, Build, Build program, as well as in helping generate 1.1 million direct and indirect jobs and catalyzing business activities all over the country. We've proven that collaboration is an effective way to address the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is why we have made it a practice to always involve our different partners in addressing these problems. Through collaboration, we get to achieve more and realize our objectives faster. We also get to see the problems from different perspectives and are able to consider many other ways to move past the obstacles and find solutions. And it is through collaboration that we have been able to come up with more problem-specific policies that will help truly address the problems in our labor sector. Finally, may I invite all members of the MAP to help us find ways and solutions to enable more direct investments. Invest in our country. We need additional investments in 2021 and generate at least 2 million jobs in the next two years. So we invite you to reopen your businesses and invest. With recent reforms, we have been able to make tax incentives simpler, fairer, and more efficient. And we need you to invest to help small businesses, invest to create jobs and new opportunities for everyone. We urge you to help businesses expand and to consider keeping your investments here in the country. Business confidence, we must be able to show so that more will be encouraged to restart and grow their businesses and investments. No stronger testament at promotion than by walking the talk. With the vaccine rollout having started last March 1, our hopes are high that we are on our way out of recession soon. Obviously, businesses play a vital role in the vaccination program. This mass vaccination program faces a host of challenges, but businesses in the private sector have been of tremendous help. The national government, about 300 companies and 39 local government units have signed tripartite agreements to secure 17 million doses of vaccines from AstraZeneca. Um, and as early as November of last year, actually national government and private firms have already secured 2.6 million vaccines from AstraZeneca. Last month, the private sector and local government units issued their advance payment for 20% of the AstraZeneca vaccines it ordered. Also just last month, it was arranged for even micro, small and medium enterprises to be able to procure Novavax vaccines for their workers with 200 doses minimum order. Government is trying to work out a purchase of vaccines from vaccine manufacturer of uh, Novavax. And if the deal is secured, this will allow MSMEs to get their share of doses to, to inoculate their workers against COVID-19. Um, the private sector has been helping government in more, they, more ways than one. And we do acknowledge that part of our success from the COVID-19 response to COVID-19 risk management to risk communications and even in the vaccination rollout have been with your continued support. And as President Rodrigo Roa Duterte said, there is light at the end of the tunnel. National recovery is within sight. And we salute the business community for the support. I echo the call of our president to continue our bayanihan, and I look forward to the day that we can all look back to our experience during these pandemic times and say that we are indeed proud to be Filipino. Palagi ko pong sinasabi sa gitna ng ating pinagdadaanan bilang isang bansa, ito po ang sigurado sa patuloy na kooperasyon ng bawat isa, aahon at aahon din po tayo. Maliban sa panalangin, kailangan nating magtulungan. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, Kapsek Nograles, for your enlightening and inspiring presentation. And now may I call on our reactors, please. Mr. Rex Cidrilon, Chair of Institute of Corporate Directors, Secretary Rogelio Singson, President and CEO of Meralco PowerGen Corporation, and Maria Margarita Margot Torres, Managing Director of Golden Arches Development Corporation, 
for McDonald's Philippines. Rex, can you start? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Popoy. Thank you, Kabsek uh, uh, Nograles, for an enlightening presentation. I'd like to go straight to my reaction. Although we did not get the materials ahead of time, uh, we, we anyway prepared uh, some something as a reaction to the expected presentation. Let me start by saying that on November 5, 2020, the Management Association of the Philippines led other 25 other business and professional associations like Makati Business Club, Phoenix, PCCI, etc., representing thousands of small, medium, and large enterprises, signed the Covenant for Shared Prosperity, which included the pledge and commitments of these organizations to promote and protect the interests of their stakeholders namely employees, customers, suppliers, shareholders, the environment and the communities where they operate in. Specifically for the communities, their commitment was to be actively involved in the communities where we operate in with particular attention to the needs of the disadvantaged in those communities. This was the Philippine Business Group's response to the global problems of inequity, exclusion and the pandemic. These global problems of inequality and exclusion are being exacerbated with the COVID-19 global pandemic. In our country, almost 600,000 Filipinos were infected with casualties north of 12,000. The extraordinary and prolonged lockdowns in different degrees of severity, the delayed arrival of the vaccines and the other factors like the not so competent, nor effective government response to and the management of the crisis are taking its toll on the lives of our countrymen. The pandemic has caused tens of thousands of businesses to close down. Even large businesses are reporting huge reductions in their bottom lines in the billions of pesos. Millions have lost their jobs, millions are going hungry, and the poverty line has gone up back to the high 20s, if not breaching 30% already. Our economy tanked, where GDP contracted by 9.5% last year and inflation is rearing its ugly head, further compounding the problems of the jobless, the poor, and the hungry. These days, when you walk around the streets of Makati, in some of the streets of Makati, our premier city, supposedly, you can see some people sleeping on the sidewalk and others begging for food and money. We have never seen this spectacle before. We are sitting on a social volcano waiting to erupt. But we cannot just complain and criticize. We, the business community and civil society need to do our share and help solve some of these problems of inequity, exclusion, and the pandemic. Fortunately, there are some specific lights at the end of the tunnel as the president and Cabsec Nograles had said, they have their initiatives and there are also initiatives from the private sectors outside of uh, PGK. Towards the end of last year, a group of 30 executives and leaders of the various companies and organizations in, engage experts in a discussion on how to urgently address the problems of hunger, malnutrition, and food security. They call it the Hunger Project. This group of corporate heavyweights had promised financial, human, and technical resources to support the project. The key organizations leading this initiative are the Philippine Business for Social Project, Progress, or PBSP, Philippine Business for Education, Caritas, Ateneo, and De La Salle. In the discussions, it became very clear that the participants mostly come only from business, civil society, and the, the, uh, the academe. It also became clear that to address the issues of poverty, hunger, malnutrition, and food security, the solution has to be national in scope and coverage and also multi-sectoral. The, pro the, the programs have to be implemented in urban centers and in rural areas as well, including those that have peace and order, insurgency, and conflict problems. For example, 
if the situation eventually deteriorates further, we can expect food riots, looting, violence, even hijacking of food supplies. We need to be proactive and anticipate these disturbances and not wait for them to happen first before we act. But we need help, especially from the military and the police. Well, the main task of our uniformed services are maintaining, maintaining peace and order, that's the police, and protecting and defending our territorial integrity, combating insurgency and terrorism, which is the military, including defending the constitution. We also need them to ensure that the hunger project initiatives nationwide, which includes feeding programs, food production, food processing, food transport, and food distribution in conflicted and non-conflicted areas, urban or rural, are protected and defended from undesirable elements. At the end of last year, the Hunger Project, led by PBSP Chair Manny Pangilinan, signed an MOA with the then Commanding General of the Philippine Army, who is now our AFP Chief of Staff, General Sobihano, establishing the alliance between the Army and the Hunger Project. We expect to have similar MOAs with the Navy, the Air Force, and the whole AFP in the next few months. What about the PNP? Right now, the PNP is struggling with issues of credibility, corruption, criminals within the ranks, and drug-related deaths under investigation, or EJKs, among others. And we do not want to bother them yet with this project. But yes, at the appropriate time, we should also sign them up. In conclusion, Three years ago, Pope Francis issued his encyclical Laudato Si, where he hurled a challenge to the world to hear the cry of the poor. Today, we should not only listen to the cry of the jobless, the poor, and the hungry. Let us all do something about it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Rex. Uh... Secretary Singson. Yeah, thank you, Popoy. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Secretary Carlo, for sharing with us the initiatives of government in addressing hunger, poverty, and un unemployment in the midst of this unprecedented pandemic. As you mentioned, the private sector continues to support government in these initiatives in more ways than one. And we expect and we hope to have stronger support. This afternoon, you gave us an indication of what are the priorities where you want the private sector uh, aligned with government. Of particular interest to me is the Filipinas Contra Gutom, PKG, which has as its main objective increasing availability, accessibility, and should be sustainable. Unfortunately, the basic issue here is that unless the government uh, through more cash transfers or additional ayuda programs, amelioration programs, the poor would not be able to buy or have access to food. I believe there, this is where the private sector can really support the PKG program by helping open the economy, investing more in the economy and creating employment to put more money in the pockets of people to have access to food and basic needs. Like, uh, Carlo, I know DSWD and NEDA has the list of poorest municipalities and communities across the country. So maybe if this can be shared with the private sector, better target the communities that need help most to support and together with the uh, government programs so that these communities can really have better access to food. Another area you mentioned is how to address unemployment, which as I mentioned, if addressed properly, will naturally provide more money to the pockets of workers to have better access to food, uh, reduce malnutrition and their basic needs. I would like to reiterate the call to a calibrated opening of the economy and to resort to isolated uh, ECQs where data shows increases in transmission of COVID. Also with very strict enforcement of all health protocols, even when the vaccines have started to roll out. Let's not put our guards down. Again, opening up the economy will put more money into the pockets of the people to have 
better access to food. With regards to infrastructure and the build, build, build of government, being familiar with government spending, if corruption can be minimized, more infrastructure spending should go to labor intensive infrastructure projects in the countryside. I think you did mention that we should put more in, in spending in the countryside. And I feel, I really believe that that should be the direction, labor intensive. The big ticket items become big employment generators only during construction, but that will be after several years of engineering and design works. So the labor intensive local projects provided the government funds are spent on the right projects at the right cost and right quality will generate more employment and money to the rural areas. Also, if uh, we can support, it will support the Balik Bayan or Balik Provincia rather, Balik Provincia program of government so that we can somehow decongest uh, Metro Manila, be, which is already beyond its carrying capacity. So I hope in developing the government's national uh, employment recovery strategy or the nurse, it considers more labor intensive. Again, let me emphasize because uh, some projects are equipment intensive. In the countryside, labor intensive projects will really provide more employment. The big ticket BBB projects should still be pursued, but the need for employment is now rather than later. So I'm really pushing and hoping that more uh, rural projects and labor intensive infrastructure projects are undertaken by government. Again, thank you and good luck to your program, Sec. Carlo, and we hope our colleagues in MAP and the business community heed your call for collaboration and support by investing, bringing out more money into the economy and creating more employment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, babes. Uh, can we now call on Margot? So good afternoon, uh, Cabsec Carlo, uh, the MAP Board of Governors and my fellow MAP members. Um, I wanted to start with a question uh, to everybody. If Do you see everything that's wrong with government? And do you rant on social media? Or do you share in your Viber groups or WhatsApp groups what government has missed or failed to do? In all honesty, I got tired of that during this entire pandemic and it drove me to want to be part of the solution and help rather than add to the noise of negativity. So today I would like to share three points. The first starts with a leadership mindset. And this is the mindset of servant leadership. It is about service to our country and to the fellow Filipinos in need. As leaders in the business community, it behooves us to help and find solutions to fill in any gap. This has been the role of Task Force T3 in collaborating with the IATF and the NTF to strengthen the test, trace, treat system and now the vaccination rollout. My second point is about a holistic point of view. In a multi-sectoral movement for zero hunger that Cabsec Carlo explained as Pilipinas Contra Gutom, I have personally witnessed the power of partnership between government, the private sector, and civil society. This power drives the shared goal to end hunger by 2030 and the short-term goal to uplift 1 million Filipinos by 2022. This power has broken down silos between public and the private sector and even within government and within the private sector. Gone are the days of doing good on your own. The power of doing good together creates more meaningful impact. 
It results in change because we need to address a multidimensional problem of hunger. We need to break down silos and find synergies to move forward. It's actually not about doing everything or a lot, but really choosing the right programs to create the impact that we are looking for. One example of this partnership is that government through Task Force Zero Hunger headed by CABSEC Carlo has already identified 32 priority areas based on the indices of poverty and malnutrition. So the first priority in Luzon would be CAMSUR. The second in the first priority in Visayas is Negros. Uh, the first priority in Mindanao includes Bukidnon, Cotabato, and Zamboanga del Norte. But part of this partnership is from the private sector using the same indices, we have identified 17 more priority areas. And I'll just name a few, Palawan, Romblon, Abra, Mindoro, Surigao del Norte, Albay, Zambales. And by working together, we are able to prioritize where the program should begin and sequence this properly. In PKG, we learned from Nicola Crosta of Impact 46. He is a gentleman who actually was part of the committee that formed the UN Sustainability Development Goals. And often we want to help during a crisis and we end up reacting to the situation. We donate relief goods. We never hesitate to do that every time there is a typhoon or even the pandemic. Nicola Crosta calls this impulse philanthropy. And what we need in Nicola's words is impact philanthropy. We have embraced this philosophy in Pilipinas Contributum under the leadership of CABSEC Carlo together with our work stream leads. Hence the approach we are taking is more focused after meaningful in impact and really synergized among the 70 partners of the movement. I'm going to react actually to the other reactors just to let you know that the following organizations are already part of the movement, including PBSP, who is behind the Hunger Project, Gonegosto, PDRF, Caritas Philippines, Scaling Up Nutrition Business Network, Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines, just to name a few. We look for sustainable solutions in Filipinas Contributum to address really hunger and malnutrition. So again, please, if you'd like to know about the work streams, there are four missions. You can check filipinascontragutum.com. You can also email pkg at ph or papahotel.mct.com if you would like to join the movement. My third and final point is about data-driven decision-making. Data allowed us to prioritize those areas based on poverty and malnutrition indices, which is why you have 32 from Task Force Zero Hunger and 17 more. Data has also guided us when it comes to what uh, programs need to be done, which areas in the Philippines, even in relation to fighting COVID. So before I end, I wish to thank CABSEC Carlo for helping the private sector, as you may not know that he is the private sector liaison for the IATF for emerging infectious diseases, together with his role as being co-chair for that Interagency Task Force and Chair for the Interagency Task Force on Zero Hunger. So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Margo. At this point, we will now go to the Q&A. As I mentioned earlier, please submit your questions to the Q&A button. Anyone from the main speaker and reactors can answer. Uh, due to time constraints, the MAP members will not be given the opportunity to speak. Let me start with a question from my daily 
walking partner, James Matty, the head of Tower Watson, with this question. Do we have adequate full supply stored or to be delivered to, me to meet any new pandemic crisis? So in the um, IATF, we also have uh, task groups and we have a task group on food security um, headed by the Department of Agriculture Secretary, Secretary William Dar. And they're the ones, um, the, that task group is in charge of ensuring that uh, uh, the supply of uh, food um, is adequate. Uh, because as we all know, uh, any disruptions in the supply of food uh, will affect also the prices. And that's what we're seeing right now in uh, pork. Uh, because of the ASF, we have red zones and we have green zones. And so the, as far as, uh, as pork supply is concerned, uh, we need to have a, a, a multi-pronged approach in solving that problem. Um, so I'm sure a lot of uh, focus has been placed on the price ceiling and uh, bringing of pork supply from the provinces to Metro Manila. But uh, also part of the equation is also the uh, increase in the minimum access volume, um, the tariff rates for pork, uh, because we want to correct uh, the, the needed supply of uh, pork in the market. And that would entail really uh, bringing um, more imported uh, pork uh, supply while we are also focusing on repopulating our hog industry. Um, so our, our uh, CAMESA Task Force Zero Hunger, we are also calling for a meeting to get all of the actors, uh, departments and agencies who have a chance to, who have the opportunity to help us in repopulating the hog industry. And I'm talking here about uh, even getting the Department of Agrarian Reform um, involved uh, with, through their agrarian reform beneficiary organizations and even the farm cooperatives under the Cooperative Development Authority involved also in, uh, in getting them involved in, in the efforts to repopulate you know, uh, the hogs here in the country with particular focus on the green zones. Um, so that's as far as uh, hog supply is concerned. Uh, pagdating naman sa other commodities like uh, rice and uh, fish um, and vegetables, um, wala ang, ang indicators naman natin is that we have enough supply uh, on that. And um, of course, there, there are some fluctuations also in the prices like uh, suppression ng galunggong that, that we also have to address. And sometimes, depending on the supply of vegetables, uh, there will be um, um, increase in prices. No? But, uh, but that's also something that, that, that we have to, to focus on. Um, may I answer something in the chat box? Uh, I think there's yes. a misunderstanding. Uh, because I see in the chat box that the, um, there was a comment on the 1 million uh, sabi, sabi, ang sabi dito, masyadong maliit yung 1 million for target ng government. I'd like to right. correct the impression. The 1 million is not the target of the government. That's the target of the private sector, so Filipinas contra Gutom. The target of government is actually found in our national food policy. So this is what we launch, no? So national food policy. And what I'd like to point out also in the national food policy, because hunger is, is too enormous a problem. What we've done is we've dissected the problem of hunger into several key result areas. And ito yung tinapatan ng private sector. When we came up with our six key result areas um, or six pillars, private sector came up with their own six pillars, but now focusing now on four work streams. But basically, when you talk about hunger, it's not just about feeding people. No, that's, that's, not, that's not the way to, to end hunger or to achieve zero hunger you start with the policy environment. And that's our KRE1, our key result area one, is to have that enabling environment, the policy environment that will enable um, us um, in, in government and even in the private sector to attack the multifaceted and multidimensional issues and concerns with regard to hunger. 
Um, that's really the policy environment in terms of local government ordinances to national government policies and even laws and all of that. No? Then second is food production. That's <coughs> KRA2. KRA2 or Key Result Area 2 focuses on increasing the production of our producers or food producers uh, with particular bias for our small producers, for small fisher folks, small um, um, uh, farmers and fisher folk increasing not only their production but also their income because what we want to do is also to address the problem of rural poverty um, then number three is um, ending all forms of malnutrition and when we talk about malnutrition the most vulnerable sectors of society there are the pregnant or nutritionally at risk pregnant women and children under five because remember, um, there is a particular bias and focus on the first 1,000 days of life. We passed a law on the first 1,000 days of life, but there is no um, real program of government attached to that law. And so what we're seeing here is that meron tayong feeding program for daycare children under DSWD, meron tayong feeding program for deaf ed school, school kids from kinder to grade six, but we are not seeing a feeding program for the first 1,000 days of life, which begins from the time a woman is pregnant all the way to the time the child is born up to the time that the child reaches two years old. So what we've done so far is the National Nutrition Council has launched a Tutok Kainan program, Tutok Kainan program which, which deals with providing complementary feeding uh, for nutritionally at risk pregnant women and uh, for children under five years old, particular attention to children under two, because that's where stunting comes in. And by the way, that is the window of opportunity and the critical period of the child's rapid brain development and physical development. So the science will tell you, United Nations will tell you that if hindi mo maagapan sa first 1,000 days of life, dehado na ang bata, all the way to the time that he's part of the workforce. So we've also pitched a proposal with the World Bank to get funding for us to be able to provide um, nutrition specific and nutrition sensitive programs in the top 200 municipalities where stunting and wasting and undernourishment is highest. So we've already identified that we've already pitched in with the World Bank, we worked with the World Bank on this. And right now it's under review uh, ng NEDA ICC and hopefully if it passes both the World Bank and the NEDA, we'll be able to implement this program in the 200 municipalities of the country uh, by 2022 onwards. So it's like a four-year program renewable for two more years. Uh, third is accessibility and safety of food. So while we produce food sa mga kabukiran at kanayunan, we have to make sure that it gets to the pinakatalipapa ng pinakapurok ng bawat barangay so that there's diversity in food or, or selection of food uh, available for, for all peoples, especially the poor and the marginalized. And together with that, siyempre, importante rin yung mga community gardening programs, uh, vegetable gardening, urban gardening, para those who cannot afford also have access to nutritious, diverse um, uh, nutritious products or vegetables no? um, within their communities. Um, then uh, KRA, that's KRA uh, uh, 4, then KRA 5, we have um, sustainability um, of our food systems. And that really talks about uh, how we should be sustainable, how food systems should be sustainable and even resilient in times of calamities and disasters. Whenever disruptions in the food system happens, dapat mabilis tumugon ang gobyerno to address these disruptions. No. Um, and then KRA 6 is where PKG comes in because KRA 6, this is the final KRA, talks about people participation um, and information, education, awareness. Um, because as with the battle against COVID-19, if you want to reach zero hunger, you need people participation really. It, it, need, it entails that people are aware, are informed, they make the right choices, make the right, the right decisions. They know that there's a problem and you give them an opportunity to address the problem. So that's where the private sector comes in. That's where PKG comes in because we have that, that, um, that specific uh, key result area called people, people participation. 
So everything that I said are all detailed in our national food policy. And this national food policy provides all of the targets that we've set out for ourselves and all of the programs and projects and activities of government that address these issues, that meet these targets. This is actually our action plan. It's like a playbook that we have. And this is the assignment that the president gave us, a particular assignment, so that when we hand it off to the next administration, we have something called a playbook, called the national food policy that we can hand off to the next president. And hopefully that his or her administration will continue what we've already started. And that's also what I envision to happen with Filipinas contra Gutom. With the private sector there, uh, taking the lead, taking the charge together with government, whatever administration comes in, have, they have to remain committed to the goal of zero hunger in 2030. And it's not like a goal that we just picked up from thin air. It's part of our United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. It's SDG number two. It's our collective responsibility. It's our intergenerational responsibility to hit that goal in 2030 despite what's happening with COVID-19, despite the pandemic. But again, it, it needs everyone's support, you know, not just government, but everyone, including the private sector. Absec, may I add? Um, I've also seen some questions uh, on the Q&A and, and the chat. Um, you know, some of you are asking for detail for Pilipinas Contra Gutom. I was only given five minutes, <laughs> but we do have four work streams. And each work stream uh, actually um, has a plan on a page. I mean, they, they have really defined and identified priority programs. And we are in the process of making sure that these are measurable. Uh, and the work stream leads have gotten together working with a Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines to really put together a dashboard uh, so that we can tra track our progress. Uh, you're talking to um, uh, corporate leaders and executives, uh, very, very strong strategists and implementers, uh, making sure that uh, we were able to bring in that discipline into the movement. Uh, so just to give you an idea, for Workstream 1, uh, this is really focused on the food producers uh, you have leaders from, the Workstream leads are from Aboitis, Jollibee Food Corporation, Vita Rich, and Nestle. So even the companies that lead that Workstream are familiar uh, with the concerns. Uh, and if you like, also have an interest uh, for their companies uh, to make sure that that particular Workstream progresses and addresses their objectives. Workstream 2, which focuses on adequacy, uh, and this is really on the malnutrition part, uh, on the problem. Uh, this is led by J&J um, &J and Unilever. Workstream 3 is on assistance, so this is more relief operations, although we certainly want a more integrated and prepared response rather than just simply reactive. Uh, this is headed by uh, Gawad Kalinga, uh, Ronald McDonald House Charities, Coca-Cola, and the Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines because we have to ensure that the logistics are in place. And the last work stream is a new concept of food banking where we are addressing food surplus. And this is headed by San Miguel, um, Grab, and Dole Philippines. So um, one of the key success factors that we learned from Impact 46 is really selecting the right partners. And um, I'd like to th think uh, that the work stream leads who have been committed since October last year and continue to make time uh, on top of their day jobs uh, have really put together a very strong plan. It's not perfect but we believe it is a, a good start and we are all guided uh, by um, a sustainable solution. So there's so many other questions in the chat, uh, so, some of which I, I can't really answer, like PKG doesn't really have a, a stand when it comes to, um, there was a question related to inflation um, and 
we can't answer everything now. We, we've also just started the movement, but I do want to assure everybody that we are committed. We have a short-term goal for 2022. And again, regardless of administration, uh, the private sector is committed to address the problem of hunger. Okay. Uh, there's also a question from Romy Bernardo. Uh, are there any plans to have a second Ayuda CAS support program for the poorest on top of the continuing excellent CCT program? Well, um, that's an ongoing discussion now between the Congress and our economic managers, no? Uh, because in order for us to push that, um, that uh, Ayuda system, again, we will need to have uh, we need to get it from, we, don't, we need to source it. No? We need a budget uh, source for, for that. Um, if you remember what happened in 2020 when the Bayanihan 1 and Bayanihan 2 were passed by Congress, that necessitated yung uh, pagkuha ng budget niyan sa ibang projects, activities, and programs of government that were in the 2020 budget. So now we're talking here about the 2021 budget, which was recently signed into law. Uh, and those in that 2021 budget, you will see projects, activities, and programs um, in respective uh, departments um, uh, to continue uh, what, what was already started previous to the pandemic. You know? So to, to get everything back on track. Because in 2020, what happened was really some of the projects were not implemented. Uh, already, and then that was used as the, as the fund source for your Ayuda and the Bayanihan 1 and Bayanihan 2. So it's a, an ongoing discussion now. San mo kukunin yung pondo? Do you get from other projects, activities, and pro programs that have already been passed through the 2021 budget? Or uutang na naman tayo? No. And the, the, other, the other way to attack the problem is basically marami ang nawalan ng trabaho because of um, the restrictions due to the community quarantine because of this ongoing pandemic. So there's always that, that, um, that discussion um, in the economic team na uh, the, the way to get uh, people not dependent on Ayuda is to get them back their jobs. Diba? So, so it, it has to be more than just Ayuda. Uh, because yung ayuda happened at a time na we were in ECQ and MECQ because everybody had to take a time out, everybody had to stop moving kasi nga we needed a breathing space to, to, to get our health sector uh, and response ready. No? And it paid off in a big way because after how many um, episodes of multiple deaths happening, we were able to control deaths, we were able to control um, infections because we were able to build isolation facilities, quarantine facilities, get all of the PPEs, get all of the um, equipment uh, together. We, the, the breathing space that we gave to our health sector paid off in a big way because deaths have been uh, up to this point, um, been up to the minimum, as minimum as possible. So 2021 really is a whole different year altogether. More than just Ayuda, I think what we really need to do is give, give jobs to our people, help them find jobs. So kaya nabuo yung nurse program, kaya nabuo yung, yung, yung ginagawa nating employment recovery um, strategy. Because it's about employment now. It's about getting people back to work or sa anak buhay or sa kanilang kabuhayan. More than just uh, ayuda. Kasi hindi naman tayo naka-ECQ ngayon at MECQ ngayon. Eh. So based on the IATF policy, ayuda only comes when people are forced to stop moving because of ECQ or MECQ. But right now, we're still in GCQ and MGCQ. Kaya wala pa, hindi pa natin nakikita the, the need for ayuda. But what we do need to acknowledge and what we see is that we need to get people back to work. Uh, this is a question from Christina Tan. Uh, Philippine Association of Meat Processors and uh, DA agreed that swine flu is killed at 72 degrees. Yet several LGUs still confiscate processed pork products and burn them. In the midst of such of much hunger, 
their actions cannot be comprehended. What is the science they follow? Can we get LGUs to align with national agencies? LGUs during the pandemic until now actually add to the burden of businesses to operate. Um, yan kasi ay kailangan talaga ng ano. We really need to get the when we when national government um, gives policy direction. We really need to get the LGUs also on board. No, um, it's not. It's not uh, perfect. There will be LGUs that will uh, do their own thing or uh, lilihes, but uh, there's always that um, mechanism that we use uh, DILG, you know, through the DILG to get them back on track. Um, and we've seen that happen, especially at the start of the pandemic. You know. uh, pero um, kung meron man mga LGUs that go off track, we we are able naman to bring them back on track. So whether it's a COVID response or whether it's um, challenges like the Africa, uh, the ASF, uh, whether it's challenges by the DA, uh, meron naman tayo mga mechanisms, whether it's through the DA itself or by asking help of the DILG to get the, to get the LGUs back on board again. Um, so we take it on a case-to-case -case basis pagdating sa ganyan. Kasi minsan meron lang talaga mga outliers. Eh. Um, it's not... But generally, LGUs follow naman. But uh, there will be outliers every now and then that we have to just reel them back, bring them back on track. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one last question, uh, Kabsek uh, Nograles. Can you respond to the suggestion of Secretary Singson on focusing on labor-intensive provincial construction projects? Are these the kind of projects that will push through this year? There's a mix, no? We have big ticket items, we have big projects, and we have uh, the, the smaller projects, the more labor-intensive projects. And I think um, that's one major strategy uh, that we've seen uh, that's really worked for us in the administration. And that's why we've seen the hunger incidence really go to its lowest at 8.8%. Um, so even when... Before COVID happened, ang ganda na nung ano eh, ang ganda na nung mga accomplishments accomplishment natin pagdating sa gutom because yun na yung pinakamababa that's ever been measured by SWS. That was December of 2019. Before COVID happened, nandun na tayo sa 8.8%. Well on track to going kasi ang target namin at that time was 6 6.3 6.6% yung target natin for the SWS. So we're already at 8.8. That's just kulang na 2.2 percentage points na lang to reach our goal na 6.6 percent by year 2022 and then COVID happened so mm -hmm. kaya nga ang gusto namin mangyare if you use SWS as the benchmark we want to bring it back to 8.8 percent before the end of the term of the president but my point here was the driver talaga of that na na pababa natin ng ganon is because of the build, build, build programs that have that we've seen. The effect of build, build, build programs has been really an employment generator in in various parts of the country, uh, in the countryside. So when we saw na yung build, build, build programs natin were moving um, to to all regions, no, uh, well balanced na distribution of these infra projects in all regions. Um, in municipalities, in, in areas, even in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas, nakita talaga natin na it, it really helped. Because the more people are working, the more people who get employed, who get employed, uh, the more we are able to drive hunger incidents down. That's just basic, that's the basic principle here. Kaya nga, it's, it's more than just, more than just programs on, on, uh, on feeding, more than just complementary feeding, more than just assistance programs from government. The really long-term solution is a combination of build, 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 and plant, plant, plant. That's really what we, we've seen, um, and that's what the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us. Hindi pwede infrastructure lamang, you also have to attack rural poverty by investing also in, in food, in agriculture. Kaya nga po, uh, yun yung ating, at, ating gusto mangyari now. Um, to build, 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 and plant, plant, plant. More than yung ayuda. Because if we start talking about ayuda, we'll have to get it from some projects that are already 
in the pipeline for 2021. Kaya nga po, if, if all things go well, what we want to do is looser restrictions so that people can go back to work. We can implement more projects for plant, 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 and build, 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 get more people employed. And that's really the way to go for 2021. And then you'll see the hunger incidents go down. So that government can concentrate na lang on the outliers, can concentrate na lang on the marginalized, no? Because those who aren't, aren't marginalized, those who can work, who have the ability to work, and who have opportunity to work, can, them, can feed themselves and their families. And then government can just um, catch those who are really in the, you know, uh, who are really nasa, ano, nasa marginalized, mga marginalized na lang yung, yung tututukan natin. And that makes it more manageable. Okay. Uh, President Gigi, before we adjourn, can we hear any parting words from you? Yes. Yes. Uh, Kamsek Carlo, uh, many thanks. Very interesting approach. It fits in with the MAP trying to work with you, the government, to push the country forward. No, I like your last few sentences on the build, 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 and the plant, 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 as opposed to just purely uh, depending on the ayuda. I, I think also from the nature of the questions in the chat box, you can see how involved and how concerned the MAP members are towards the current situation, but also towards the subject of the discussion today, which is addressing hunger, poverty alleviation, and unemployment. No? And so we'd like to thank you and the reactors for uh, giving very interesting suggestions on how we all can move forward. And then as you yourself have said, we all have to walk the talk as opposed to talk the talk. So I guess we will be uh, self-evaluating ourselves as, as time goes by. But many thanks for taking the time to be with us this morning. Uh, Margot, also thanks for explaining a bit more about the Filipinas contra uh, Gutom, no? because I think Again, not everybody understands everything about what other people uh, talk about because there's so many things that are going around. So many thanks, Popoy. Many thanks, Rex. Many thanks, Babes, uh, for also uh, shepherding this uh, informative uh, general management meeting uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Gigi. Thank you, Kabsek Nagrales, Rex. Secretary Babes and Margot, for sharing your time and expertise with us today. Thank you, everyone, and stay safe and healthy. This uh, MAP GMM is now adjourned, but uh, may I invite Kabsek Nograles, Rex, Secretary Babes, Margot, and Gigi to keep their video on for a short photo op. Okay, Arnold, uh, are we okay? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you all again. Thank you, Popoy. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Carlo. Good. Thank you. Good program. Yeah. Carlo, Carlo, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you Kapsek. Good luck, Carlo. Thank you. Good luck to all of us. Yes. <laughs> Keep it up, Carlo. Okay. Thank you again. Thanks, sir, Popeye. Thank you. Thank you.